Hi, welcome. My name's Miss Liz and I'm here today on August 30th to bring you our uh, children's message. Um, I am excited to be with you and today we're going to talk about Jesus cleansing the temple. Um, cleanse is a pretty big word, but you probably know a word inside of cleanse. So this is the word cleanse and if I cover up the S-E, can you recognize this word? It's clean, right? So cleaning is to free something from dirt, marks, or stains. During Jesus' life, he came to cleanse the temple built by Herod in Jerusalem. And we hear this story in all four of the Gospels. So we hear this in the, in the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So Jesus came to cleanse us from our sins, and he also came to cleanse the temple. The Temple Mount was a very big area. Um, and some of it was outside and some of it was inside. The sanctuary was the place you could go inside, but this was quite small and only the priests could go inside of it. Outside of the sanctuary, it had three courts. So one court was a place, an open area, where only Israelite men could go. The second place, a little bit farther from the sanctuary, was where um, Jewish men and women could go. And then the third place was called the Court of Gentiles. And that was where anyone could go, and that was farthest away from the sanctuary. The third court is where the merchants, or the people who sold things, in the temple would sell animals for sacrifices. So people would travel all over the world to come to the temple in Jerusalem for Passover. During Passover, Jewish people would sacrifice or kill an animal to ask God for forgiveness of their sins. So since people were traveling so far, it didn't make sense for them to bring an animal with them because it was expensive and um, something could happen to the animal. So they would just buy an animal when they got to Jerusalem. But unfortunately, people began to take advantage of this and they would begin to charge a lot more money for the same animal they could have bought for much cheaper somewhere else. And so the travelers also would have to exchange their money in, in order to pay their temple tax. Roman money wasn't accept, accepted in the temple, so they would have to exchange it, exchange it for the proper money and they would charge them too much money to change out their money to get the different currency like if we have a dollar here in Europe they have a euro and they would change the charge the money to change out those different um, currencies so Jesus didn't like that they were using the temple to cheat people out of money and he wanted people to be able to come to their father's house um, to find peace in a place a quiet place to worship so this resulted in Jesus reacting to the chaos inside of the temple. Um, and we hear in John 2, verses 15 and 16, that he, Jesus actually made a whip out of cords, and he drove the sheep and the cattle out of the courts. And he also overturned the money tables and scattered the people collecting money. To those people who sold doves, Jesus said, Get these out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a marketplace. They were turning the temple, the church, where people were supposed to worship God, into a place to make money. And Jesus didn't like that. And so we call this Jesus cleansing the temple. He cleaned it from the marks and the stains of people's sin, just like he cleansed us from our sins. It seems like Jesus is angry here. Have you ever been angry before? Anger is a human emotion, and it happens to all of us. While it's okay to be mad sometimes, the Bible warns us to be careful that our anger does not lead us to sin. In Ephesians 4, we hear that anger can be a foothold from the devil. That means Satan can use our anger to damage our hearts and hurt others. Jesus uses his anger to let people know that their decision to cheat others from their money and a quiet place to worship is not okay. We need to be careful that our anger does not explode and we have a moment where we lose our temper. While Jesus has a strong reaction, he does not hurt anyone or sin. Therefore, we, we need to be more like Jesus and stay in control of our reactions. Because when we lose control of our anger, it can make a mess of our lives. I'm going to show you what happens when your anger builds up. So if you have a lot of anger build up, all you need is one reaction. And it makes a mess out of your life. Good. James.
James, Jesus' brother, tells us in the Bible, My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry, because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Let us try to remember what James says the next time one of our siblings breaks our toys or a friend says an unkind word. Let us be quick to listen to their side of the story and slow to become angry. Let us remember that anger can lead us to sin and make a mess in our lives. Let's try to be more like Jesus and cleanse the sin from our lives. I pray that you have a great week. If you're heading back to school this week, I hope you have a wonderful week. I will see you next time for our Sunday children's sermon. And I pray that you are safe and healthy and happy. See you soon. Bye.